Hello, my friends, and welcome to Lean and Clean with Fitness Chef Christine. I'm Christine, your host. And if you are in your 50s, perimenopause through postmenopause, you are in the right place. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of muscle building. You may have heard the phrase, muscle burns fat. So then we need to build some muscle, right? If your goal is to be healthy and happy as you age, not skinnier, but stronger, then this is what we're going to talk about today. So you'll also notice that I sometimes I do recipes and sometimes we just chat. Today is a just chat. We're not going to be really getting into any recipes, except for the recipe of how we're going to build that muscle. So at the beginning of my weight loss journey, I was desperate to lose the weight. I had tried a million different diets and I really was just searching for the magic cure. It's like everybody does, right? So I started researching what I could do in perimenopause to lose weight. I set a goal for myself to lose 50 pounds by the time I was 50. So at age 49, I started my journey. I gave myself a full year to lose the weight. And I began researching what I should do. First thing that came up I was swimming. So I started swimming, except for the fact that I found it extremely boring and I was really having a hard time sticking to it. So I decided to take some classes on swimming to learn how to do my strokes better and get better at that. That's all really good cardio and you do absolutely build muscle through swimming, but it wasn't happening fast enough. On the opposite side of the pool, I saw water fitness going on and I noticed that they had some resistance training in the water. So I thought maybe that's a better option than just swimming laps back and forth. So I hopped over to the other side of the pool. I started taking water fitness classes and I loved it. I really loved it. I took so many, I became an instructor. However, I still felt that I needed more. So I started taking strength training classes two times a week. And I immediately started to see changes, which became addictive. And because I have an addictive personality, I decided to do that every day of the week. Now, I also learned that it's very important to take a rest day, where in the beginning, I didn't really do that. I was teaching water fitness strength training, doing yoga, and I just kept adding more and never taking anything away, which is also not the best way to go about building muscle. The first thing that I realized, and I started researching, I started taking more and more classes, and this is how I became a health coach, was I was trying to find that delicate balance between building muscle and not killing my body. Because again, my goal is always, as I age, I want to become more mobile, stay mobile, feel good, feel healthy, feel strong, not necessarily skinnier, but just in a good weight, right? So I started this strength training and I realized quickly that that was the most efficient way for me to lose the body fat and start feeling better about myself. So I dedicated myself to not change up the workouts all the time. It's very tempting to change your workout, but to stick with the core basic exercises and start progressive overload. So for instance, let's see bicep curls. I started out with very light weights when I first started, maybe three to five pounds, doing those bicep curls, doing those bicep curls. But the mistake I made was staying at the same weight level for quite some time until I hired a personal trainer and taught me that I needed to continually challenge my muscles. That progressive over- overload is what helped me develop more muscle. Now I can always, I don't weigh myself, but I can always tell when I start to feel a little fluffy because the muscle tone is not as as prominent showing in my body. And that's okay. You're going to go ups and downs. That's a factor of life. But from an overall standpoint, we want to be doing progressive overload to help us maintain that, that healthier level of muscle tone. As we age, we start to lose muscle. So it becomes very important for us to really work those muscles and keep progressing with that. In addition, we have to support that with healthy nutrition, which should not be a surprise if you've been with me for a while. We focus a lot on protein intake. The reason we focus on that protein intake is that helps support our goals of muscle building. The more muscle we build, the more fat we burn. Therefore, protein becomes a very important factor in what we're doing. Now, having said that, I still maintain that we have to have a huge amount of vegetables in our diet or supplement them. I do juice plus veggie supplements every day. Because even though I eat a really healthy amount of vegetables, 
that some vegetable servings at every meal and sometimes for snacks, I still can't possibly get enough. So, healthy amount of protein, good amounts of fiber. Those are the things that are going to help us reach those goals. All right. So not just that, but a balanced diet. Your body needs carbs. Don't give up all your carbs. Your body needs those good carbs to help you with endurance. And muscle building takes endurance. You really need to fuel your body. I'm going to say that again. You need to fuel your body. I say it every episode. We are fueling our body. We are fueling our body. Now, in the next episode, I'll be talking about the specific vegetables that are in season. We're going to start to really ramp up your love of vegetables. Because if I can entice you to eat more veggies and more good protein, you'll have more success at building that muscle. We don't think about this enough, but we really need to stay hydrated. I have told you before, my goal is always to drink a gallon of water a day. I also take a pinch of Celtic salt on my tongue for the purposes of making sure that we get those good minerals in there, making sure that we maintain not just a level of hydration, but also getting those electrolytes up because I don't know where you are, but where I am, it's been about 90 to 100 degrees every single day. And I'm outside all day teaching water fitness. So it can be very dehydrating. We want to stay hydrated. It will help us to feel really great as we go into these workouts and as we exit. Now, one of the things I find as we get older, and you might find this too, we start to lose flexibility. So when I was in high school, I used to compete in gymnastics. I wasn't very good, but I was out there. And I was really flexible, right? Like doing a backbend was no big deal. Didn't even have to think about it. Just flip right over, not a problem. As I've aged, though, Sometimes it's hard to even bend down and touch my shoes. And a back bend takes a lot of work for me now. So while I can still do it, I might need the wall to walk my way down there. And one time I injured my shoulder doing that. To age, there's different things that really become challenging that used to be easy. So we want to maintain that mobility and that flexibility. So any good exercise routine is going to include those two things, flexibility and mobility. Now for me, I started adding Pilates to add more flexibility and mobility and a lot more core work. So my routine looks like this now. I teach water fitness summertime, so just about every day. I do my strength training four days a week, four to five days a week. I do Pilates. I do reformer Pilates two times a week and mat Pilates every other day. Now, that may seem like a lot of exercise, but and I do yin yoga at least once a week. But for me, it's the balance, not a great amount of time. It's the balance of getting in strength, flexibility, mobility, and really centerized, centered core work. Because if we can keep a strong core, we can protect ourselves from falling and injuring and breaking part. I personally do not want any kind of surgeries. So my goal is to avoid those surgeries as I age and stay as strong as possible. Let's move on here a little bit. Always, you want to consult your physician. So consult your doctor. Find out if you're healthy enough for any kind of activity, any kind of exercise. So I would never want you to go into something with no knowledge of how healthy you are to do that exercise. Spend the money for a good consultation of a doctor and somebody to lead you through your exercise. Whether it's in a group class or one-on-one, spend the time to spend some time with somebody who knows what they're talking about. It will further your growth so much faster than try to figure it out on your own. And don't make the mistake that I made in the beginning to change up your workout all the time. At least stick with a workout from four to six weeks, six to eight weeks, and then change it up. But stick with the same basic exercises. You don't have to do them in the same rotation, but really there's only so many really accessible exercises for each muscle group. And you really want to continue progress versus variety, if that makes sense. Now, we don't want to get bored. Fall in love with the exercise process. Fall in love with the growth of your muscles. Fall in love with the fact that your body is changing from the inside out. I find that when people first start getting into their exercises, their mentality started changing about how their body works. Our bodies are miracles. It's amazing what our bodies can do. Learn to appreciate and love the body that you have while you work for the body that you want. You may never get the body that you want, right? As you progress, you might think you want to be a size six and then you get to size six and you're still not satisfied. Those goals may not solve your problems as to how you feel about yourself, 
but we want to progress in a way that we start to love ourselves a little bit more all the time. And it is a challenge. As we've gotten older, listen, I got some love handles that I just, I don't really appreciate. I would say we just go away. I always joke that I do enough exercise that I, I should be like a thigh zero. And I really concentrate hard on my nutrition. But then I think back to all the wonderful things my body has done for me, right? I have two amazing kids. I had three children. I had one that died at birth. And, but I was still blessed to have her. I was still blessed to have a body that could carry children. I never take that for granted. Never. And I am amazed at all the things that my body can do. And while I wish I didn't have certain aspects of my body, I still appreciate and love my body. Let's talk a little bit about how muscle burns fat. So it increases our basal metabolic rate. So that is the muscle tissue gets metabolically active. So it starts to burn off weight, burn off fat a little longer. So if you've ever done cardio, while you're doing that cardio, you're burning those calories, burning those calories. And when you're done, calorie burn is done. When you strength train, you have that after effect. That burn continues long after as your body tries to repair itself. So we also have increased fat oxidation and improved insulin resistance, or I'm sorry, insulin, blah, 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 insulin sensitivity. Boy, it's been a long day. My, my mouth does not want to get the words out today. There's a lot of hormonal benefits. Now, it's not news to any woman who is in perimenopause through postmenopause that our hormones are like, woo, all over the place our estrogen drops and our bodies start figuring out this new direction. And by the way, ladies, it's going to change and change. And that's going to change the makeup of your body. As I said, learn to love the process. Do not worry about it. This may take a long time to change. So you just roll with it and just keep reminding yourself that this body has done a whole lot for you. Doesn't need to be perfect by society standards. Learn to love it. So as you start to figure out this whole strength training thing, it starts to stimulate and release growth hormones and starts to help you regulate everything. And we want to maintain that lean mass, right? So as we start to deteriorate in muscles and we start to build them back up again, that's also going to help us burn off more. So there is no downside to strength training. And I don't care if you have to sit in a chair and strength train in the chair you have to lie on your bed and do it lying down. There's a million ways to do it. Don't accept any excuses. Get started today. Start today. There's no reason why you can't just start. Lose the excuses. And maybe that you were doing so well, you were doing great, and then you fell off the wagon. It's okay. Just start back again. I'm here to tell you I have started over many times in my life. It is all good. You can do it. I am here to cheer you on. I'm here to help you. I have wonderful friends and resources. If you need help, I am absolutely happy to help you and point you in the right direction. Anything in nutrition, you can send my way. I'll be happy to help there too. And I hopefully you'll have looked back at, at previous episodes and going forward that you have subscribed and that you will stick with me. And together we can go on this journey because I have a passion for, for food and faith and fitness and fat loss, and cooking, and all that good stuff. And I just really look forward to sharing it with you and really looking forward to connect with everybody. So leave me a comment. Leave me a rating. I'd love to hear from all of you. I pray that everybody has a great rest of the week. I will be with you again on Sunday where we are going to start to do some zucchini recipes. It's my goal to help you love your veggies. All right, my sweet. Have a great night, and I will talk to you soon.